Now, for the next 11 days, we're in the hospital, and uh, for the next six months, Matt's not going back to school. He's going through a very scary two-and-a-half-year window of cancer treatment. And it's frightening. And it's lonely. You take a child that's nine years old and take him out of his school environment, I mean, at the most critical time in his life, when he needed his friends the most, he couldn't be there. He couldn't be with them. And the loneliness that we saw, it just, I wanted to do anything in my power as a parent to help him. This is a, a picture of Matt when we, left the, when we left the hospital. During this time, he's going through a lot of transitions. The chemotherapy makes his hair thin. He's got sores in his mouth. This is just an awful time, and he's lonely. I wanted to do something to help him connect with his friends at school. So I talked to the school, and we, I asked him if we could put a web camera in the classroom and one in our home so he could have a dialogue with his friends. Now, for those of you that remember 2002, there was no Skype. There was no uh, you know, FaceTime. It was uh, this crazy software called NetMeeting, which we got for free. But we got so lucky, we were able to find someone in the technology department at a school who wanted to help us. And we made this connection. And you should have been in the room when those two cameras clicked on. And he could see his friends, and they could see him. The smiles in the room. And so during this time period, Matt loses his hair. His friends saw that. They were with him. His face, as you can see, it starts to balloon up from all the steroids. His friends saw that. They're with him during the journey. Those 26 kids in Forestville Elementary School's fourth grade class are with my son as he's going through this process. And, and he felt that he wasn't abandoned. He felt that he wasn't alone. And it was just absolutely amazing. Over the summer, his hair grew back. He goes back to school in September. He walks into the classroom. His hair's back. They're rubbing his hair for good luck because they knew what happened. They saw what happened to him. They got it. And I thought, this is just too good not to share. So we started a charity, and we called it Hope Camp. We gave it the name Hope Camp because we wanted to send a really clear message to these children it's not a matter of if you're going to go back to school, it's when. But back then, we had a problem. In 2002, a laptop cost over 1000 bucks, and these cameras that you clip onto the computers, were the good ones, were at least $100. So we needed to, we needed to raise money. We needed to find a way to draw, bring revenue to this. Now, at the same time, I started exercising more to cope with the stress of his illness. And I started running more. I'd, I'd run, I'd done some short triathlons, but I started doing more and more volume. Started running marathons. And a good friend of mine at the Rest and Runners told me about this race in Maryland. It's called the JFK 50. It's, a 50, it's the oldest 50 mile ultra marathon in the United States. It starts in Boonesboro, Maryland, and it ends just outside of Hagerstown. So I decided to sign up for this race. And I emailed everyone I knew, and I asked them to give me a dime a mile, a buck a mile, whatever they could, whatever they could give. And next thing you know, I crossed the finish line in about 10 hours, and I raised $5,000, and I formed this charity, and now we can have enough money to go buy five computers. We bought the computers, we went back to the clinic where he was being treated, and we signed up five kids, and we connected those children. And that's how we started in 2002. Every year, I do the race again, we'd raise more money. I do it next year, I raise $10,000. The next year, I raise more money. Then I started doing uh, triathlons. This is my daughter, Vienna, uh, crossing the finish line with me at, the, at an Ironman. Now, for those of you that know about Ironman, it's a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a marathon to top it off for fun. And, uh, and I did this race, and now I've raised $30,000 doing Ironman triathlons. Now we've got enough money to be able to hire a part-time coordinator, and now we're helping over a dozen, a dozen children a year. And again, we continue to do, I do more and more races. I did five of these Ironman races and continue to raise more and more money to help support the charity. A good friend of mine uh, named Bill Sickenberger had told me about this bicycle race in Florida. It's called the Sebring 400. I guess you, guess you know where I'm going with this, right? 400 miles 
in 24 hours. So we did this race, and I raised $75,000, and now we've got enough money for a full-time director, and we're helping two, three dozen children a year. So he had this, like, this wonderfully beautiful spiral. The more that I would put out, the, the, harder, the harder I'd press myself, the more resources would come toward the charity. And that's kind of how we, we kind of got, got.